Good morning, everyone. This is the doctor. It's another fiery and smoky one here in the Pacific Northwest, but we are finally getting some clear air coming in just a little bit, supposedly starting today. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed that it gets a little bit easier to breathe, a little bit easier to talk, and a little bit easier to drive outside. Today, we're going to be covering all of the cards that are coming out. We're going to talk a little bit about the Crystal Chronicles cards. We're going to let you know everything you need to know about whether or not they're good cards. And believe it or not, you are going to be able to max one of them for free to play players. And all you have to do is log in. So for all that information, make sure you guys stay tuned. All right, everyone. Well, we have a whole bunch of cards and there is a lot to go over here. We're gonna go ahead and start off with In Search of Drops, which is gonna be the free MR card that everybody is gonna be guaranteed given. This is very similar to the Final Fantasy Tactics 2 card where they gave everyone a copy and they are giving you some shards too. <laughs> if we're getting the same, bless you giant, if we're getting the same events as JP, what we're going to be seeing is we're going to be seeing that as long as you log in daily, if you do the challenge missions, if you do the bingo board, you are going to be able to fully max this card out. Now, this is incredible. No matter what type of player you are, getting an additional plus 50% JP on a specific unit is amazing. And if you are new to the game, having a card that gives 30% attack bonus to the entire party is very powerful as well. So this is going to be a great addition to anyone's arsenal uh, in terms of leveling up or acquiring JP for new characters. This is going to be a must have. And for anyone out there who already has the JP card, I imagine it probably does stack with this because the JP up from other content stacks as well. So the amount of JP bonus we could get on a single unit here pretty soon is pretty absurd, particularly if you're stacking, you know, the pass, the bonus pass, if it's double JP up, if it's a bonus unit for the week, if it's, you know, if you got a card from your friend, if you got the party wide card, and if you have the individual JP up 50% card, it's going to be absolutely bonkers. So I think it's awesome that they're going to give this card to everyone. Just make sure you're logging in. Make sure you're doing the challenge missions in order to fully awaken this. Now, for those who inherit the crystal, this card, if you want to max this card, you need to know what you're planning for in the future. This card is very particular. Uh, it increases single unit defense up plus 10, evasion minus 5 and it gives a party-wide fire attack up plus 35. This is very similar to the Tetra Sylphid card, where Tetra Sylphid, just for Lucia, was extremely powerful, right? So there were many people who ran the Tetra Sylphid card literally just for Lucia. So I imagine if you are someone who utilizes fire composition quite regularly, or you think you are in the future, this card is absolutely critical for you. If you're running rain, Look at the stats on this. It gives a base magic plus 171 when it's fully maxed. Not only that, it gives defense for the individual unit and fire attack for the party plus 35. This card was made for rain. It's going to be great for Adelard as well. It could even be useful for units like Seymour who are kind of like samurais who are designed to take a hit. Could be great for Lilith. And of course, we have the new Fire Ranger unit coming out. And we have the Fire Archer, Coconut Lilith. We also have Christmas Mashery coming out, who are all fire. Now I'm doubting that Coconut Lilith is fire, but I'm pretty sure she is. I'm pretty sure she is. But either way, we do know Christmas Mashery will be coming here in the near future. Being able to pair a triple fire team is quite likely. And you're probably going to want to have a fire team with the advent of the AI changes that are happening to Fryevia. If you can imagine having significantly more Fryevias in any type of content in the game, 
right? As soon as she gets full life fix, she's going to be just as viable as Ayaka or sometimes better in many situations. You're going to want your fire units to really be there so they have the type advantage against Fryevia. That's going to be Delita, that's going to be Adelard, that's going to be Rain, that's going to be Lilith. Literally every single fire unit is going to have that type advantage. It's just like if you're fighting Ayaka and Lucia and you got Victoria. And I don't know if you all remember, but there was a while where the double gunner meta was very prevalent. And when you pulled Luc uh, pulled Victoria, literally she would just run in there and one shot Lucia and it was incredible. And that's what we're gonna see if you start using this card. Getting those type advantages for those units in order to go against units like Fryevia are gonna be crazy powerful, right? There's a lot of Agriuses right now. There's going to be many ice units in the future. Laswell is an ice unit. So there's gonna be no shortage of ice units to be using these fire element units on, and it's just going to give you the advantage that you need. So if you're wondering whether or not you should go full on out for this card, I would assess what your uses and what your units are that you're using, and also realize that Ildzira is also out right now. So Ildzira also, of course, could counter the fire units. So you're gonna kind of want to weigh carefully, right? Because with the advent of this card, we're kind of entering into this elemental advantage type zone that makes units of a particular element really strong. Uh, I think about ice units that have uh, weapons with the ice up attack. I think about fire units who now have this card. I think about Tetra Sylphid who has the wind attack up. Like there's so many interesting elemental buffs that are happening right now that I'm wondering how that's going to change things. Now, one of the other cards that are coming out is one of the highest rated UR cards on the JP side. This is going to be the Horn card or what is called Solidus. Now, look at the base magic on this card as well. It's gonna have 178 base magic, 292 HP. It's gonna increase single unit magic attack plus 10. And then we're also going to get slash attack resistance plus 20% for the party. That is an extremely high amount of slash resistance. Not only that, it's buffing the magic attack of the unit and it's significantly buffing the magic of the unit as well. So again, this is another great card for Rain, right? Rain uses tons of magic attacks. If you have him on sub of Night Grand Shelt, he uses Byraga, Fire. He's gonna benefit from this with a huge amount. A lot of you guys are running Siren on Rain. Being able to increase the slash resistance for the party is always valuable. How often have people run Iron Giant when we're in a very heavy Sid meta? This is just going to make it even more stronger. I think besides Rain, Solidus is going to be really powerful on units like Kilfe, right? Units who specialize in going up against slash opponents. Units that specialize in killing units like Sid, who just got a sword that gives lightning plus 30. So we're going to see a little bit more defensive play with Solidus. And I think Solidus is gonna be one of those cards that a lot of us are leveling slowly over time. And I'm not sure, I believe, and don't quote me on this, I believe with Solidus, we are able to raise Whisper's slash resistance to 100%. Now, I don't particularly care about Whisper, but I know there's a lot of people who do care and care about the slash resistance stats. So I do believe Solidus helps get us higher with that additional 5% that it's giving over Iron Giant. Finally, we have the Soul Flayer card. And Soul Flayer is not super incredible. Uh, <laughs> he does give magic attack up single unit plus 15. And he does increase the maximum damage cap. Now, I had improperly translated this uh, earlier where I thought it only increases magic damage cap. It actually just says damage cap. So there's really no difference between this card and all of the other cards that increase the damage cap. I mean, it's not particularly special, I feel like. I mean, yes, it's going to be for magic units. Yes, it'll be great on Eldira if you are going to be running the raid or Miranda. But I mean, it's just kind of like, eh, like that's how I feel about it. <laughs> now the Esper on the other hand, let's talk about the Esper. Cause I think the Esper is actually one of the more 
unique espers out there for magic users. And it is rated in JP as the third strongest magic esper. And I actually believe that's wrong. I actually believe that Soul Flayer, depending on the content that you're doing, is probably the second strongest magic esper. Now he does have low agility, that is something to be aware of, but he does have specifically increases magic, right? So you can see here he has increases magic 15%. He also has lightning resistance up here. He has human killer, 4%, 7%, 10%, uh, 15% human killer, magic attack plus 10%. And I think it's really the human killer that might set him apart here. So I would have to run numbers, I would have to look at it, but I would think he would be very relevant in arena content. I think he could be very relevant in content like Guild Battle where you're fighting human opponents. I would really have to look at everything and dissect it, but I think the gap between second and third strongest Magic Esper, so keep in mind, that would be us comparing Mind Flayer to Shiva and to Rama. I think no doubt he's stronger than Rama, and I think in some aspects besides his agility, he could also be stronger than Shiva, particularly if you have him built the proper way. Now, you do have to be aware that he is weak 10% to lightning, but he does have 5% resistance to fire. Both elements are really seen a lot in Arita, uh, Arita. <laughs> Arena and Guild Battle. So both of those are both gonna give you a disadvantage and an advantage and you're really gonna have to weigh the pros and cons appropriately. Overall, I would say Mind Flayer is probably one of those units that is great if you get them, uh, kind of like Ochu, right? Like Ochu's a little bit specialized. I would say Mind Flayer is a little bit specialized as well, and you would really have to know how you want to utilize him and how you want to take care of him. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed all the breakdowns of the information here. Thank you, WarTheVisionCalc.com, for letting us use a lot of their information in my videos. If you guys are looking to buy Vizior for this upcoming Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles banner, please use my affiliate link, dig.gs slash coins or dig.gs slash offer. It's one of the best ways to support me. And hopefully I'll see you guys on stream later tonight between 9 p.m. Pacific time and 1 a.m. Pacific time as we get ready to pull on the Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles banner later tonight. Thank you so much, you guys, and have a great rest of your day.